Welcome, welcome back to Crafting a Meaningful Life. I'm Mary Crafts, and I have a great guest for you today, Amanda Greaves. And she lives in Boston, Massachusetts, but she's talking about topics that apply to us no matter where we live. I live in Utah. Drew, my producer, lives in Florida. If you're listening from the Philippines, I know some of you listen even from Dubai. The things we're going to talk about today that have created the story, Amanda's story, apply to all of us. Welcome, Amanda. I'm so happy to have you here. Mary, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so very much. And let me just start with saying, um, I was reading through your website and some of your social media to see if we were a good fit. Mm -hmm. And there popped up this copy of your upcoming book. And I was like, what is that? That's like totally awesome looking. (laughs) And the title of the book I read, Chameleon Diaries, Mm-hmm. And usually when I read the cop, uh, copy of people's books and see the photo, I immediately know what I think it's going to be about, which is good. That's what we want people to know what the book is going to be about. Yours, it just stopped me dead. I was like, what is that? What is Chameleon Diaries? <laughs> and so I'm so excited to talk about your premise yes. for this book. So let's start and tell our listeners a little bit about past uh, you know, what you were doing for the bulk of your life and then the shifts that happened in voila, where you are today. You've been a chameleon in your own life. I have. And to a certain degree, I believe we all have. Uh, So it, the chameleon diaries, it was an evolution for sure. And I went out, I, my pivot point in life to be, to just cut straight to the chase is I was in a bad relationship and I had a, um, a disrespectful client. And it had gone, both of those situations had gone on for too long. And I got to a point where I said, I just can't do this anymore. Now to back up a little bit, I have been an interior designer by trade for 20 years. I've had my own company for the last 13. And for all you entrepreneurs out there, when you realize that you have to wear every single hat when you start your own business, There's a chameleon aspect when we do it that way. You know, you're the sales, you're the marketing, you're the designer, you're the, you're the secretary, you're the banker, you're the bookkeeper, all of it. And so that's when I started to realize the importance of being flexible and how I actually lived my life and approached the projects and approached the process of owning my business. Fast forward to current day, it's 13 years later, I have six employees and Like I said, I had one client. He had been a huge client of ours for about five or six years, and it just started getting, he was demanding. He wanted us to lower our prices. He wanted us to do twice as much. He was disrespectful. And I had just had enough. And then simultaneously, of course, because, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. I was also dating a man who I realized towards the end was a full-blown covert narcissist. And after talking with my coach and therapist, I realized that he might actually have borderline personality disorder. And so I, I, but I was sucked into his cycle, his love bombing. I love you. I'm so sorry. And then he would disappear with no reason. And then he'd sweep back in and do it again. And, and that's like that repetitive aspect of it is, it's damaging. It's abusive. And you get, I got to a point where between these two situations, my self-worth had been beaten up so much that a year and a half ago, I just, I, I spun out of control and I said, I can't do any of this anymore. None of it. And the chameleon aspect for me really just shows that we all have the ability to change. We can be whoever we want in whatever instance that we are in. However, one of the bigger reasons why I had continued to shift and change throughout all of my life was that I had these limiting beliefs of self-doubt revolving around not being enough, (laughs) being told I was too much, vacillating yeah. between the two, <laughs> trying to figure out if I'm supposed to go up or go down, be loud or be quiet, all of those different aspects. And so I started getting lost underneath the cover of all the masks that I was wearing. And subsequently, you know, starting out at a young age, um, 
missed my dad a lot because he traveled and I became a people pleaser. I didn't understand the value of true love. I didn't understand what love really meant and how it was, how it was meant to be. And so I thought I had to do things to be loved. And it, it really started a cycle that lasted for a long, long time. And, and that's why, Amanda, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stop you right there for a minute. Mm. Because when I read your bio and all these things, and not all these details, I didn't know. Oh, these not, aren't in there. <laughs> yeah. But now I know that that is exactly why you and I are here. And it's exactly why my listeners want to be here. Because we are way more alike than we are mm. different. And the exact things that you're talking about, crazy enough, they are the exact same things that I went through as an entrepreneur and business owner. And, you know, the, the client's always right, even when they're not. I mean, who invented that statement? You know? <laughs> <I know. laughs> because as you and I both know, I know. that 20% that of the clients take 80% of your time. And so why All are we time. working for those 20% when we could just send yep. them down the road and live this beautiful life. And the same thing applied to your mate, to the guy that yes. you were seeing and spending time with. I was 28 years in a marriage where I felt as gaslighted. Now I didn't, back then, we didn't have that term. I didn't, I didn't even it. know what that word was. I didn't even I, know what that word, and people kept saying I was going through, I'm like, hey, that's me. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going through all of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as you're going through, and when you got to, sometimes I was way too much. And do you know how many times my mother and father told me, Mary, you're too loud, quiet down. And then <laughs> vacillate that between you're never enough and you never will be. It's and exhausting. The commonality of the oneness that happens when we become as vulnerable as you are is that we realize we are the same. Mm -hmm. And that you are me and I am you. And whether or not they've experienced the exact things that we are, we just happen to have experienced the exact same things. But, but the well, fact that <laughs> everyone has problems and that the more vulnerable we become in sharing them, the more suddenly now I'm Amanda, I'm connected to you. And exactly. I see you and I understand myself better. And Mary... As I was digging through my journals, hence the diary portion of the book title, as I was pulling these memories together and writing these stories, I was uncovering truths about myself. I was uncovering lies mm -hmm. that I had been telling myself, and I was uncovering lessons that I had been learning for the last 40-something years, many uh. of them I didn't recognize at the time. Yeah. But now going through and doing all of this work to write the book, I actually found that more of the work that I was actually doing was in the healing of myself. And so the more lessons yeah. I found, the more I learned about how to break through some of those, you're not enough, you're too much, limiting belief, self-doubt, I can't, I should, blah, blah, blah. I realized that there are so many other women and men, but my focus is primarily women out there right. that they're afraid to go and talk to somebody. They don't have the network or the tribe of women or support that they actually need. And the more I started writing these stories, the more I felt like I was channeling the opportunity for others to speak up. I was channeling the opportunity through my book to have it be utilized as a tool for other women to get on their path of self-discovery, to get on their path, to understand who they really are when they take off all the masks, who they really are at their core, when they uncover all of the things that they thought they were supposed to be, and they really understand who they actually are on the inside. And, and I think like me, book. Amanda, you are hoping, uh, when I wrote my book, my goal was not to become a millionaire or a worldwide speaker, which I, I know that at your age, that's, you know, what you kind of like, Oh, I'm going to speak around the world. It would I, be great. It would be great. <laughs> okay. And there is nothing wrong with that, but the right. bottom line motivation is that if we can help people leapfrog just a few years, even, and learn yeah. this lesson now by reading about it and, 
and internalizing it as opposed to having to experience it. I'm so really, can I just say how yeah. tired I am at my age of learning from the school of hard knocks? I hate that school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to claim it as my alma mater. Okay. But it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so by writing and allowing people to read our words, and especially I could just see it already, these words of the chameleon diary, we are helping people leapfrog just a little bit, put them farther down the road than where they would be just on their own, struggling every day. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the one of the one of the primary stories of my life, it's definitely in the book, but one of the primary stories of my life was I got married for the second time at 30. And it was the same type, same type that yep. I've continued to date since then. <laughs> Not the tall, dark, and handsome, or short and successful, whatever it may be. It was the emotional, unavailable type yeah. that I was do attracted I, to. Do I need to send the Boston message? I know, I know. We should slap you up. up. <laughs> no, I'm good now. I'm good okay. now. But, 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 but when I got married for the second time, I naturally, at the age of thirty, my clock was ticking, and I thought, "We're we're going to have kids." You know, we've done this move-in thing. Now we're doing this married thing. And after we got married, he just said he didn't want to start a family, hmm. and it it wow. felt like it was too late, you know. And and so it spiraled me out. And then from there, it was a lot more life lessons were learned. But I eventually ran out of time, mm -hmm. and so. I didn't end up having the family that I wanted. And, and that is one of the main reasons why I wrote this book is so I can connect with the women that are in their mid to late thirties when they still do have time to start that family, but they also need to know that it's okay to get out of whatever they're in. If it's not suiting them, if it's not right, if he's not on the same page. Thank you. And I learned that lesson so much later than I wish I had. I can't go backwards. And I now know that I'm here for a very specific reason, but I want these women to understand it's okay to step aside and start making changes towards the life you know you are worthy of living in the future. You know, I always tell women um, whenever I speak or whenever I'm in a communication one-on-one -on -one, in my book, it's the last two sentences of my book. And I say, please, the lesson here to be learned is that nothing is impossible and it's never too late. Now, this is the first time I've encountered something where I've thought, well, maybe it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, wanting to have a family and then staying in this stuck rut to the point yeah. where then having a family became kind of unrealistic. How was yeah, that for it, you when you first confronted that, when you realized perhaps it was too late? Well, Mother Nature helped me realize it when, for my birthday last year, I skipped a period. And so that was the primary indication that I started entering into perimenopause. Yeah, and so yeah. that... Yeah. Birthdays for me are always another trip around the sun, another year closer to whatever, another year further away from that. And it was, I was getting closer and closer to fully believing it and accepting it. And now I'm in a complete state of understanding and knowing. And I think that is what actually gave me the power and the freedom to really let go of that dream mm -hmm. and really go full force focusing on the opportunity to serve other women. So they don't get to the same place that I did. Yeah. Um, but I have to tell you, Mary, every birthday from 31 on, I'd cry. And not because I was sad of what I did. I mean, I have a very successful award-winning interior design yep. business. Yep, I read that, that on your website. You know, and, and, and people know me and, and my network is deep and wide and it's, and it's wonderful. The community that I live in is fantastic. I have some really great people around me, but my birthday was always an indication as I, for many, many years, looked at what hadn't I done. And I finally had to take a moment a couple of years ago when I said, Amanda, cut it out. Stop it. What have you done? 
Look ah. at all the outrageous things that you have done this year. From one birthday to the next, what have you done? Who have you met? Who have you inspired? What projects have you completed? What clients did you fire because they just weren't worth it? What builders did you start working with? Who did you meet and connect with and light up? And I stopped worrying about what I wasn't able to complete because I started to realize I wasn't meant to. I wasn't meant to know that person. I wasn't meant to go down that path. I wasn't meant to, to experience that aspect of motherhood because I have so much to give. I now look at it as this is my new opportunity to give to as many as I possibly can. Millions would be ideal. But this is my opportunity to find that one or two or three women that really need to hear this message that they yeah. are enough. And if their dreams aren't aligning with their reality, maybe it's time to reassess. And so when I reassessed a couple of years ago and started saying, what have you done? Where is all the greatness in your life? It really started to shift how I perceived who I actually am. And it was awesome. Mm. It, it was awesome. I, I can tell it was awesome because I can feel that breath when you start talking about that and then knowing that you're now not just still searching for the path, your feet are smack on it and you're walking forward and you know exactly what you're yeah. wanting to do. And I have to say uh, at this age, I can tell you there'll be a few more things thrown in there for you as well. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you solidly set your mark and proceeded. And I love that you went through this metamorphic chameleon experience yeah. where you began to throw off the things that no longer worked for you. And it's, it's hard work to do those things yeah. because some of them have been around for decades, habits, people, ideas. Mm. But when you get to the point where you start to understand if I'm not happy, in the life, the day-to-day -day that I'm doing right now, what is it that needs to change? And I honestly believe it's a matter of getting rid of the distractions, being unapologetic about the fact that you're taking time for yourself. If there are people around that are, oh, you know, that, that, that they're upset that you have decided to take care of you and not be next to them sitting in a bar or, you know, going off and doing something else that isn't really bringing you that much joy and what have you. Or being on your email when they're sending you an email at 2 a.m. That or texting while you're having a conversation with somebody else, you know, like, let's get present with each other. Yeah. Let's, let's, and let's respect each other's space. So yeah, my thought is if somebody doesn't like it, well, then maybe they're not meant to be on the same path yeah. as me moving forward. And I hate that people, uh, we have developed that uh, scenario in our population of entitlement. And mm -hmm. so suddenly they get, even, even if they're like really not significant in my life or your life, they have this, what do you mean you're not there or you're not responding or you're not answering or that you're not going to meet me for coffee in the morning? Uh, what, what could, uh, this is like really important. Mm. Yeah. I worried about that for so many years. Uh -huh. I was in my company for 35 years um, yeah. and I didn't ever have the courage to say, I have something that's a little bit more important this morning. Um, I'm going to go to the gym and then do meditation. My clients would have thought I was nuts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, so you're hundred percent right. <laughs> I'm glad that you picked up and left. And obviously you still do some in that area because um, with all the reviews on your website, people are like knocking at your door every day. Oh but yeah. I mean, our company is still going strong. Yeah. I have a, an amazing team. So there is definitely still involvement there, but it is, I feel that because I, I mean, my business became my baby. And I put my whole, and you understand that, you know, I put all of my effort and my energy into that company. And thankfully, 
it shows in the quality and the integrity yeah. of the employees that I have. And so when I finally said a year ago, I've had it, I'm out, I can't do this anymore, da, da, da. I was getting cynical and it, I was in a bad spot. Yeah. They stepped up and we've made a plan. And, Sad. you know, I, I mean, as crazy as this sounds, I really put pen to paper, hardcore starting in April. I wrote my manuscript between April and September and then took uh -huh. October, November to edit. And it was at lightning speed, but I surrounded myself with the right kind of people, got the right kind of advice. And I had already for 13 years built a support system so that my company, my design firm is running on autopilot. Uh, so, you know, that's it's, amazing. It's, whether you're at just starting out halfway through your firm, ready to just give it all away, or you've already stepped aside, there are ways of doing it better than I did that I now learned after the fact that I would love to be able to share with whoever is in mm. those positions. Um, because the mentoring and the coaching opportunities that I fortunately was able to come across, in some instances, they saved my life. <laughs> so it was, you know, it's been, it's been a really amazing, crazy, wild roller coaster for the last probably 10 to 15 years. And I really wouldn't change anything because otherwise I wouldn't be standing here. I wouldn't be talking to you. Thank and... you. Thank you. If every <laughs> single guest on my podcast could say that as succinctly as you just did, mm -hmm. I would be so... thank you because it's struggle does not equal failure. No. Struggle no. equals growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's joy in disappointment. Oh my God, this is terrible. Oh, what do I need to learn from it? this? Because I never yeah, exactly. want to live this lesson again. <laughs> right? You know, I think um I am I'm a big event person. I love to go to full immersion events. So Tony Robbins is I jumped on his train back in 2018, and that's kind of what started this whole thing. But one of the major things I've learned is that this life, we were created to stand out in it. Not one of us is the same in the sense of, as you said, we are the same. We experience the same situations. We are not alone. But each one of us, this life was created for us. What happens, happens for us. Yes. As a, as the opportunity to take advantage of it in the best way, as opposed to feeling like a victim when you say something's <sighs> happening to me. Yeah. And again, one of those lessons that I learned, and soon as that tiny little shift happened, things really started to look different. You know, I'm thinking about this through the eyes, the listening eyes uh, of my listeners. And... I can just hear the excuses that are coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They go like this. <laughs> oh, well, those two women own their own company. I and don't have so time to do that. They don't, uh, they don't know what it would be like if I just left my position. I wouldn't have the money and I, my family would be failing. And I would. So if you're saying that to yourself out there, listeners, it isn't a good excuse. Excuses are your direction to failure in this life. They are. And so I, yeah. I think that maybe not everyone had their own company the way we did, but it is the same fear when we step away and choose something different. And <laughs> so maybe you're working for someone else. And if you were to really pursue what you want in this life and make that shift, okay, maybe there would be hard financial times. Yeah. Okay. But do you not choose it because of that? Do you stay stuck because of that? Are you willing to go through one, two, five years of less fin financial place that you have been in to get to the point where you get to write your own future, your own entry into your diary? The subtitle of my book is, it's The Chameleon Diaries, Designing a Life Worth Changing For. Oh, did I know that? I didn't, but I just spewed it right out there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, exa exactly. But, you know, again, Mary, we got to connect at some point physically. Okay. So, yeah, but it really. Is, 
you know, they say, oh, gosh, Amanda, you know, you've just got so much motivation. I wish I had half of that. And I've turned around to so many people and I've said, courage can be taught. You yeah. can learn how to be courageous. You can learn how to get out of your own way. It's mm. just a matter of accepting who you might actually become if you decide to stop making all those excuses. I feel like I could talk to you for an hour. Let's do another stop. one. Let's, yeah, do, let's another do another one. one. And I'm going to put this challenge out to me. Okay, yeah. I'm going to say it out loud, but I've been thinking it the whole time. My favorite thing to do is to do a podcast face-to-face. -face. But we do this a lot because we have the miracle of technology. Yeah. I can be in Utah, you can be in Massachusetts, and all's good. But I want to come see you. I want to meet you. I want to record another one face-to-face, -face, and this is when I want to do it. After your launch of your new book, after all those things have happened and six months have passed by and we get to talk about, do you remember when we got together and you hadn't yet even, your book wasn't on yeah. the shelves, blah, blah, <laughs> yeah. blah, blah. And we'll share the lessons, those recent lessons, because yes. I'll tell you, they're happening to me every single day. I really thought that after I retired and after I got to this point, I would just be talking about other people's learnings, lessons. <laughs> It doesn't, it never stops. It never stops. Thank heavens. What a boring life would that be? Right? I know. Yeah. It is Mary, what we want. Uh, Massachusetts in the summertime is the best time to come out here. So I've I invite you. I, yes. Yeah. I can't wait for you to come out. I know exactly where we can go. And I, I so look forward to it. And let me think. Six months after my launch. So my launch, uh, the book will be coming out end of February. And the okay. launch that I am having at a local uh, theater it holds 800 people. So I plan oh, on filling awesome. the place, right? Is um, February 29th, the book is coming out, which just happens to be my birthday. So. <laughs> All right. So here's the, my next challenge to you. Yes. At please. your launch, at your launch, I'd like, because I know you'll have a photographer, professional oh, yeah. photographer on site. I know yep. that already. That's what I did yep. in mine. And I want you to send me a photo. Several yeah. of them, maybe, maybe, you know, one with your, all your people coming into the launch with you, with your book, you on stage. And then I'm going to say, you know, do you remember this? When I did her yeah. podcast just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, oh Mary, I'm going to make a note for myself. So I specifically remember to send yeah. it to you. I'm going to put a note right in my calendar when we're read, when we're done. Is the book available for pre-launch uh, to purchase? Not yet. My okay. intention, my goal God willing, is that it will be available for purchase by early February, pre-order by pre -order. call yep. it February 1. And right. so depending on the time of this launch of, or, of the, um, the production of this episode, hopefully it'll be around February 1, but it, um, that's it'll my be, goal. It'll be when you want it. You just have to say, and Drew, my <laughs> producer is listening and he'll make sure yeah. it happens then. So yeah. when you actually, when the book is actually available on Amazon, I'll do this follow-up with these pictures after your launch, right after your launch. Great. And then we're going to come see each other. And oh I'm God, Mary, I cannot <laughs> wait for you to come out here. It's going to, it's going to be amazing. You I are feel amazing. Like, I feel like a rocket ship and I'm just, yeah. I'm in the launch station. I'm in the launch station. I'm in the launch station. Uh. And I'm so ready to <laughs> lift off and it is going to happen. It's it going to really happen. It really is. You, yeah. I know you because I know me. Yes. And I didn't climb Kilimanjaro until I was 66. I published my first book at 68. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I'm going to be married this spring in April in Ireland. Who would have ever dreamed <gasps> that there's so much life ahead. So... I'm going to let you say one last word, but my last word is going to be this. And that is, you are absolutely right, Amanda. Nothing is impossible. And it's never too late. So as you craft your meaningful life, what is your last piece to our listeners? We all have the opportunity to change. We just have to believe in ourselves to know that it is totally worth it. Yes. 
it is totally worth it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. Until (laughs) next time, listeners, just love this podcast and know that you'll be hearing from me again about Amanda. And until then, to all of you, be engaged every day at crafting your meaningful life. Namaste. Crafting a meaningful life.